Evaluating Information Sources, Print versus Web. This is Teacher Donna, your teacher in English 10. Before we are going to start with our lesson, let us pray. Gracious and Mighty Father, the King of all kings, the Alpha and Omega, we praise you and we glorify your name. Lord, we thank you for allowing us once again to continue learning despite the present crisis we have right now. Thank you for our lessons that will equip us today and tomorrow. Thank you for your love, mercy, and grace. Lord, please help us once again to be able to understand our lesson on evaluating information sources. Please help us to remember the importance of comparing and contrasting. Please help us to be able to do the activities excellently for I know that with you, nothing is impossible. Above all, Please help us to do all the things according to your will. Father, forgive us for our shortcomings. Please help us to trust in you and to not lean on our own understanding. We give you all back the glory, Lord. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the previous module, you learned the effective way to comprehend a story by comparing and contrasting movies and texts. It is important for you learners to be able to compare and contrast ideas found in multiple sources to be able to identify conflicting information and consistent information and to critically evaluate sources as well. When you can compare and contrast information, you can already make inferences and draw conclusions about topics. Comparing and contrasting information from multiple sources allows you to get a more comprehensive view of topics. So, in this module, you are going to evaluate information sources by comparing and contrasting print sources and web sources. For our learning objectives, at the end of the lesson, you should be able to number one, compare and contrast web sources and print sources. Number two, evaluate sources using the CRAAP test. Number three, establish self-regulation, self-determination, and self-requirement towards autonomy learning with the help of this video lesson. Have you been in a decision-making dilemma? If you are in a situation where you need to choose, what would you choose? What are your criteria in choosing? Will it be a good choice? Understanding how to assess the credibility of the information you come across in your study and research is essential. In this time of information age, more information is at our fingertips than ever before, and the amount of information makes it even harder to determine which information can be trusted. Post-truth, fake news, and alternative facts become increasingly prevalent in social discourse and the public. It is essential that you develop the skills to critically evaluate information yourself. If you were writing an essay about gender equality, would you be more likely to select a journal article written in 1990 or in 2020? When investigating new information, it is extremely important to consider the source or the origin from which something is obtained. When you are investigating a topic, the sources are just as important as the information itself. One way to analyze sources is through comparing and contrasting. Compare means to determine the similarities and contrast means to determine the differences. The rest of this lesson discusses the steps necessary to compare and contrast sources of information in terms of accessibility and effectiveness. Let us try to familiarize sources. Read each of the following statements given and choose the best source from the following choices in the text box for the information needed. Choices are A. Dictionary B. Encyclopedia C. Library Catalog D. Newspaper E. Telephone Directory There is no electricity and Mayor Benjamin Magalong needs to know what the weather is like in Baguio today. What resource should he use?
newspaper. This cherry has a report on the different types of volcanoes to better understand Mount Taal. What resource should she use? Encyclopedia Kim Chun needs to find the meaning of the longest word pneumono ultramicroscopic silicovolcano coniosis. What resource should she use? Dictionary Harry loves to read books by J.K. Rowling. What should he use to find the books written by his favorite author? Library Catalog Israel loves to watch the NBA. He wants to know the score for the game last night. What resource should he use? Newspaper The government imposed a community quarantine in Baguette City. People are not allowed to go out. What resource should I use to order my favorite milk tea? Telephone directory Coco Martin wants to find out how to pronounce the words seashell. What resource should he use? Dictionary The Malukai family is buying a new Toyota Hilux. They need the telephone number of the company. What source should they use? Telephone directory Axel wants to know the latest updates on the cases of COVID-19 in Baguio City. What resource should he use? Newspaper Rodrigo likes to know how typhoons were formed, especially that it is already wet season in the Philippines. What resource should he use? Encyclopedia Were you able to identify which source the statements describe? How many did you get right? Which of the following is a web source and a print source? Let's find out. A print source is exactly as its name suggests, material that has been printed and can be produced in a hard copy. Examples of print sources are books, magazines, scholarly journals, and newspapers. These materials are commonly found in a physical library when doing academic research. On the other hand, web sources include anything you can find on the internet, which contains a wealth of high-quality information if you know where to look. Some web sources are databases of scholarly articles. Scholarly articles are published in scholarly journals and are sometimes called peer-reviewed articles. Scholarly journals specialize in publishing technical and research-oriented articles and are mostly intended for students and other scholars. They're, they are often reviewed by peers in the field in order to ensure that the article is relevant and accurate. Wikipedia, which is a type of free online encyclopedia, may seem like a great source of information. It usually appears among the first few results of a web search. It covers thousands of topics and many articles use an informal, straightforward writing style. Unfortunately, this site has no control system for researching, writing, and reviewing articles. Instead, it relies on a community of users to police themselves. At best, this site can be a starting point for finding other, more trustworthy sources. Never use it as a final source. These databases are a great place to find information. However, there are other web sources which can be self-published with unclear origins. 
there is little quality control over the information you find and anyone with access to the internet can publish online. This makes it difficult to avoid bias and accuracies. It can also be hard to locate authors and references. Because of these concerns, you cannot assume that information on the web is accurate. Each web page must be critically examined. There are many differences between ordinary article and a scholarly or academic article. Magazine articles, administration documents, reports from different kinds of organizations, essays, opinion pieces, or Wikipedia resources are not scholarly articles. Scholarly articles are a full-length document on original research and sources of high valuable information. They are written by an expert for other experts with new information and research results in some fields. The authors are scholars or researchers with advanced degrees and credentials like PhD or MD and known affiliations. It can be tempting to use any source in your paper that seems to agree with what you are writing, but remember that not all information is good information. Again, not all information is good information. In doing a research paper, look for non-fictions or informational print sources. Non-fiction print sources can vary wildly in the audience they target or the amount of information they provide. Imagine the difference between a local newspaper report on air quality compared to a research study on air quality published in a scholarly journal. However, printed sources have one benefit. They generally have been through some type of critical review process that prevents poor material from reaching their library shelves. In other words, some type of quality control has typically taken place in order for publication to occur. Unfortunately, this does not give you the green light to use any book or magazine you find in the library. You must still evaluate how relevant a print resource is to your topic as well as its reliability. When looking for some sources, particularly websites, think about whether or not they are reliable. You want your paper to contain sources written by unbiased and professional experts, not businessmen with commercial interest. Using the CRAAP test can also be a good tool to check the reliability and effectiveness of your source. While there is no definite tool that can be used to gauge the reliability of all information, there are a number of memory devices that can help you remember key factors to consider. One device is the CRAAP test, developed by the Miriam Library at California State University, Chico. Analyzing the CRAAP currency, relevance, authority, accuracy, and purpose in a print and web source can help you determine its credibility and suitability, whether it is a print source or a web source. Letter C, currency. This is the timeliness of the information. If you're doing a research on COVID-19, you would need the most recent information on the symptoms, cause and effect to human. There are key indicators of the currency of the information that you need to consider. 1. Date of copyright, date of publication, date of revision or edition, dates of sources cited, and date of patent or trademark. There are questions that will help you in deciding whether or not a source is current to be reliable and credible enough to be used in paper. One is, when was the information published or posted? Determining when an item of information was published or produced is an aspect of evaluating information. 
Next, has the information been revised or updated? Is the information current or out of date for your topic? The date information when a material is published or produced tells you how current it is or how contemporaneous it is with the topic you are researching. Next question, are the links functional? Now, let's evaluate the information posted by Department of Health or DOH on the cases of COVID-19 in the Philippines dated July 5, 2020. What will be its score in terms of currency? It is 3. So it is created or updated less than 2 years. Sources reference are current. For letter R, it is relevance it is the importance of the information for your needs when you read through your source consider how the source will effectively support your argument and how you can utilize the source in your paper for the relevance there are questions also that you need to consider number one does the information relate to your topic or answer your question you should also consider whether the source provides enough coverage of the topic. Next, who is the intended audience? Is the information at an appropriate level that is not too elementary or advanced for your needs? Information sources with broad, shallow coverage mean that you need to find other sources of information to obtain adequate details about your topic. Have you looked at a variety of sources before determining this is one you will use. Information sources with a very narrow focus or a distinct bias mean that you need to find additional sources to obtain the information on other aspects of your topic. Information sources with broad, shallow coverage mean that you need to find other sources of information to obtain adequate details about your topic. Would you be comfortable using this source for a research paper? For the first A is authority. Who is the source of information? Determining the knowledge and expertise of the author of information is an important aspect of evaluating the reliability of information. For the authority, we must also ask the following questions. Who is the author, publisher, source, or sponsor? Anyone can make an assertion or a statement about something, event, or idea, but only someone who knows or understands what that thing, event, or idea is can make a reasonably reliable statements or assertions about it. Are the author's credentials or organizational affiliations given? What are the author's credentials or organizational affiliations given? There are some external indications of expertise or knowledge of a certain topic. A formal academic degree in a subject area, a professional or work-related experience, or organizations, agencies, institutions, corporations with active involvement or work in a subject area. Next question, what are the author's qualifications to write on the topic? Is there contact information such as a publisher or email? Does the URL reveal anything about the author or source? Examples of URLs, we have .com for commercial, .edu for education, .gov for government, .org for nonprofit organization, and .net for network. We have here uh, the meaning, purpose, and restrictions of those URLs. So we have .com, .gov, .org, .edu, and .net. Now let us evaluate the information posted by Department of Health on the cases of COVID-19 in the Philippines dated July 5, 2020. What will be its score in terms of reliability? The score is... Three, there are links to sources or a work cited list. Information is corroborated with another source. Next, what would be the score of, 
of authority of author and then the authority of organization. For authority of author, it is three. Credentials are given and indicate that author is an expert. For authority of organization, a known business, government, a department or agency is the home page. Next is accuracy. Accuracy is reliability or truthfulness and correctness of the information. Establishing the accuracy or relative accuracy of information is an important part of evaluating the reliability of information. For accuracy, we must also consider some questions. First, where does the information come from? Are the sources appropriately cited in the text and listed in the references? Are quotations cited correctly and in context? Out of context quotations can be misleading and sometimes completely erroneous. Is the information supported by evidence? Has the information been reviewed or refereed? Can you verify any of the information in any other source or from personal knowledge? Always use several different sources of information on your topic. Analyzing what different sources say about a topic is one way to understand that topic. The more an idea, opinion, or other piece of information varies from the accepted point of view on a particular topic, the harder it is to establish its accuracy. It may be completely accurate, but corroborating it is both more necessary and more difficult. An important aspect of accuracy is the intellectual integrity of the item. Are there spelling, grammar, or other typographical errors? Are there exaggerations or omissions? If you will use only one source, you will not be able to confirm its accuracy. That is why you should always use different sources of information on your topic. Again, analyzing what different sources say about a topic is one way to understand the topic. Now let us evaluate the information posted by Department of Health on the cases of COVID-19 in the Philippines dated July 5, 2020. What will be its score in terms of reliability? The score is 3. There are links to sources or a work cited list. Information is corroborated with another source. For letter P, purpose. It is the reason the information exists. Identifying the intended audience of the information or product is another aspect of evaluating information. Again, for purpose, there are questions that we must ask as well. First, what is the purpose of the information? Is it to inform, teach, sell, entertain, or persuade? The intended audience of an item generally determines the style of presentation, the level of technical detail, and the depth of coverage. You should also consider the author's objectivity. Are they trying to persuade, to inform, or to entertain? Do the authors or sponsors make their intentions or purpose clear? Determining the intended audience of a particular piece of information will help you decide whether or not the information will be too basic, too technical, too general, or just right for your needs. Is the information fact, opinion, or propaganda? Does the point of view appear objective or impartial? Are there political, ideological, cultural, religious, institutional, or personal biases? So let's evaluate the information posted by DOH on the cases of COVID-19. What will be its core in terms of its purpose or point of view? So the score is three. The purpose, the purpose is to support scholarly research with factual information, balance, coverage without bias. So what is our overall evaluation about the information posted by DOH on COVID-19 in the Philippines? So it is 
14. And uh, the equivalent score of 14 is excellent. So the source is an excellent source for research purposes. For the evaluation, this website is an excellent source of information. The data are up to date and the information can be checked in the given sources. The author and publisher of the information is also an expert in the field and a reliable source of information. As a student, you will be gathering information from a variety of types of sources for your research projects, including books, newspaper articles, magazine articles, specialized databases, and websites. As you examine each source, it is important to evaluate each source to determine the quality of information provided with it. Common evaluation criteria include accessibility, utility, the effectiveness, or the advantage and disadvantage of the From all the available sources in print and in web, what sources should you use for a certain topic, which is a reliable one? For nonfiction books, it can be accessed through print or online. It can be used in research and information. Books has thorough treatment of a topic. However, books may contain the latest information but may not be scholarly. Examples are theses, dissertations, dictionary, memoirs, or biographies. For encyclopedia, it can be accessed through print or online. It can be used in research and information. It has good topical coverage and is a good source for background information. However, information is usually not very specific. Example is the Encyclopedia Britannica. For magazines, it can be accessed through print. It can be used for entertainment and information. It is good for general information and it is focused on the present time. However, it is not scholarly in nature. Examples are Times Magazine, Metro, and Vogue. For trade or professional journal, it can be accessed through print. It is used for information. Articles are written by specialists in their field. However, magazines are oriented towards specific fields and is not scholarly in nature. Examples are Entrepreneur and Money Sense. For newspapers, it can be accessed through print or online. It is used for information. It is a good source for current events and contain information from primary source. However, it is not scholarly and may contain biased information. Examples are Inquirer, Sunstar, Manila Bulletin, The Washington Post. For scholarly journal, it can be accessed through print or online. It can be used in research and information. The articles were written by authorities and contain scholarly discussion. It may be peer-reviewed. However, subjects may be very focused. Examples are the American Journal of Sociology and Journal of Educational Psychology. For government documents like bills, congressional record, laws, and codes, it can be accessed through print or online. It can be used in research and information. It covers a wide variety of topics and is a good source of statistics. However, information is very specific. For research databases like EBSCO Host, Philippine E-Journals, and University of the Philippines uh, Database, it is accessed online. It can be used in research and information. It has many topics. Articles were written by authorities. It contains scholarly discussion and may be peer-reviewed. However, access is restricted to authorized users only. It may be very focused. For videos, it can be accessed through online. It can be used in research, entertainment, and information. It is good for visual learners and has a wide variety of topics. Examples are webinars, online tutorials, and blogs. For open web, it is accessed through online. It can be used in entertainment and information. It has quantity of information, however, quality is uneven. Authority of sources are unknown. Examples are Wikipedia, YouTube, and bloggers.
For social media, it is accessed through online. It can be used in entertainment and information. Information is updated frequently, however, quality is uneven. Authority of sources are unknown. Examples are Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Let's do a master check. Match column A to column B. This is a criterion that checks whether a source is up to date. Number 2. This is a criterion that checks whether the sources of information are reliable. Number 3. This is a criterion that checks whether the source of information is too opinionated. Number 4. This is a criterion that checks for functional or broken links. Number 5. This is a criterion that checks whether a source of information is selling or informing. Number 6. This is a criterion that checks whether an author is qualified to write about a certain topic or issue. Let us check the reliability and accessibility of this website. View and analyze the website of Rappler and answer the questions that follow. Which link on the website would you click to check the authority? A. Site advertisement B. Join Rappler Plus C. About Rappler D. Twitter or Facebook Number 2. Who are mostly the target audience of the website? A. Politicians B. General Public C. High School Students and D. Government Employees Number 3. What type of website is Rappler based on its domain? A. Government site B. Nonprofit organization site C. Network organization site and D. Business or commercial site Analyze the information given and answer the questions that follow. Let us read the text. The DepEd did not announce that there will be a grade 13 and Briones did not say the code attributed to her. The supposed screenshot of a news report has a watermark that says breakyournews.com. The website is a meme genera generator that allows users to customize a news report template by changing the headline, ticker, and image. A reverse image search returns memes with the same format or images of Briones on other news reports. The reports don't mention an announcement of grade 13. There are no official reports on the possibility of an additional year to the government's K-12 basic education program. There are no official reports or recordings of Briones saying the quote that was attributed to her. Which among the following did the fake information violate the most? A. Currency B. Authority C. Accuracy and D. Relevance What is the main purpose of the article? A. To spread fake news B. To clarify misleading information C. To inform the people on the additional grade level and D. To persuade the people to enroll on the new grade level Congratulations! You are now ready to evaluate information sources. For your performance task, read and carefully analyze the article. Afterwards, evaluate the given article using the CRAAP rubric. The score will validate the reliability of the given information. Give your final evaluation whether it is a good source or not.